All right, so let's take a closer look at the LP1. We got a pretty attractive design that's enclosed with two doors, mm -hmm. one here, the main one, and then one on top. So our doors are like this tinted acrylic. On the top one here, we have a magnet, so it doesn't pop up when it's printing. We've got knobs here to pull them up. Same thing for this door, it's magnetic. So let's take a closer look inside. We do have linear rails for X and Y on both sides. This is a core XY configuration, as you can see by the double belts. So since this is an enclosed printer, we can see our wires are kind of going through here and then out the back through the side panel to keep it completely sealed. So we got a power wire and PTFE tubing here going to the hot end. This is a direct drive extruder. It looks like here's our parts cooling fan. And if we look underneath, we can kind of see here it's blowing underneath the nozzle. It does look like we have a pretty large heat block at the round. It does go up to 300 C. We've got a sensor there for Z axis height and bed leveling. And then all of our electronics here are on the side, but yeah. In the back there we have the X and Y motors that do the core X Y movements. And then our Z rod is run by that motor back there. So all the wiring is quite tidy in there. And going down to the bill plate, we do have a removable PI sheet and it's coated on both sides, which is great because you can use either side. We've got a magnetic mat. We got a pretty solid metal frame and there's no adjustments on the bed because it's all automatically compensated. We do have really thick rods for the bed travel too, so that's great. And by the way, the build volume is 230 by 230 by 210 tall. So you guys can see the bed is quite large for the size of the printer. Here we have the manufacturing label. It tells us all the info about the printer. Right under that, we got the King Guru logo and it looks like it lights up. So that's pretty cool. And here we have the touch screen. And what's interesting is this printer comes with a stylus that you can use to touch it. So yeah, I guess we'll have to see how well that works. Obviously, I'd prefer just using my finger, but if we have to use this, maybe for this screen, it makes more sense. But it does come with this and you can kind of loop it here somewhere. So going to the right side, it's all clean except for the bottom here. We have some venting and also we have, you guys can see there, our voltage selector. So make sure you are on the correct voltage. Going to the left side, it's all pretty clean except when we get to the bottom. We got quite a few ports here. We got the Ethernet port, two USB ports, and a USB 3.0 port. And so because we have clipper, we have a lot of options that we can use these ports for. So I got the printer flipped around. This is what the back looks like. Here's our PTFE tubing that comes out. We got our filament detector here and our spool holder. But yeah, all metal built going down. We can see we got the power input port. It is fused with an on and off switch. All right, so now I got the printer laying on one of the sides so we can see the bottom. Thing that really stands out are these feet. So they're metal slash, I guess it's a hard plastic. Initially I thought it was maybe a harder rubber, but no, it feels like it's plastic. So yeah, and the great thing is about these is they're adjustable, so you can go up and down with them. So if your table's a little uneven or the printer's sitting a bit uneven, you can adjust it where it's perfect. So yeah, we have a really large cooling fan here for the board, a little cutout here for the power supply cooling. And yeah, I think I'm gonna go ahead and take this cover out so we can see what's behind it. All right, so we got all the little bolts out and actually these feet too had to come out. We have quite a few bolts that hold this. But we can see our fan is plugged in, so I'm just gonna lay it here on the top. And this is what the inside looks like, so it's actually pretty clean. We got our main board here, which is King Rune branded KP Cheetah version 2.2. Very interesting. Got a heatsink here, EMMC module here. Yeah, quite an interesting looking board. Looks like our drivers are here, they are heatsinked. We got our antenna going out there for Wi Fi connection. The display uses this little ribbon cable, and it is a maker base. Our power supply is actually quite small, 24 volt, 12.5 amps. And yeah, everything looks quite tidy. Or this is our motor here and this is our lead screw that goes up through the middle there that runs the bed up and down. So yeah, pretty straightforward and quite clean under here and everything looks really good. All right, so let's do our first power on. I got the printer plugged in in the back, hit the power switch. And it powers on and first thing, guys, you can see there, the logo's glowing, which is really cool. And our screen is booting up. There's an animation there. And there we go. Looks like we're booted up. So the font is actually quite small and it now makes a lot more sense why they include the stylus. Right off the bat, I can see that everything, or I guess most things are in Chinese and not English, which is a little disappointing because now we have to figure out how to change that one to settings there. It's funny because there is some English here and there, but mostly it's all Chinese. Oh, here we go. On the very bottom of the settings, it says Chinese, simple. 
All right, there we go. So I clicked on English, and now we're in English. So if yours is in Chinese, like mine was, click on Settings, and then scroll all the way down. And the very last thing is the language. So now that I can see what I'm doing, let's go ahead and home the printer. All axes to make sure everything works. So it looks like the Z's moving. The X and Y are moving on the top there. All right, and the Z's going up. And while it's homing, I'm going to go back and click on temperature and it looks like we have a hot button here for PLA click on that and now it's preheating you guys probably can't see because the font is ultra ultra tiny but we are preheating and homing at the same time all right so it looks like it homed good because we do have a confirmation of it stopping and I can see the bill plate is heating up and also the nozzle so yeah everything seems to be working so that's good all right hopefully you guys can see the screen it is very very small fonted and there's a little bit of glare but hopefully you guys can still see everything so this is our main menu we can see the temperature of the nozzle the bed here also it's read out and then we got a graph here for the temperatures we got hot buttons here homing temperature actions configuration and print and then here on the side we got main buttons including the stop button here or the reset so homing goes to our axes go back temperature lets us preheat here cool down and we have these hot buttons which is PLA ABS PTG and TPU flexible filaments so if we click on PLA it's going to preheat 195 on the nozzle and 40 on the bed so let's go back here we have actions move axes control air extruder fan control macro controls so you can literally give commands to the printer and there's quite a few different codes and whatnot else so this is probably more advanced here we got pins, disable motors, and console. We go back, we got configuration. This is where we did our mesh leveling. Z axis offset calibration, limits. Let's see what that is. Okay, so this is how hard the printer can be pushed on the X, Y, accelerations and velocities and things like that. We got network, so this is where you're gonna connect to your internet so you can control it from the computer and you definitely wanna do this to take the full advantage of the Clipper software. And I guess I'm gonna do that real quick while I'm here. Put in the password, click on save, it's connecting. I'm not sure here if it's trying to connect or it's done, but I'll click close. In any case, this is where you connect your Wi-Fi. Then we got system information, interestingly nothing here. Save config and more settings and the input shaper that we've done. So let's click on more settings. So here we have 24 hour time. I'm gonna turn that off because I'm on PM and actually it has the time right here on the side, which is incorrect at the moment. How to calibrate notification, I guess we'll keep that on. Confirm emergency stop, no. Estimated time is automatic. Font size is medium, oh, okay, here we go. Maybe we could make it a little bigger, let's say large. Okay, it's gonna reset the whole thing, look at that. All right, well actually, maybe that's a little bigger. <laughs> yeah, it does look a little bigger. Okay, so that's good. So it's a little easier to read. Hide sensors and temp is off icon theme language is english so you got shortcuts on the sidebar there you can turn that on and off printer connection screen options screen power off one hour okay that's a pretty good choices here i guess i'm gonna select never for now but you can have it turn off at certain times to preserve the screen show heater power it's off and slicer time correction so quite a few options here guys yeah that's pretty much the basics here and obviously once you connect to your browser window you have a lot more options and controls